All right, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you guys for uh, carving out time to be here. Uh, it's always an exciting time of year when your students in eighth grade are getting ready to transition. Uh, a joy for me because I've seen them grow since sixth grade to now and feel like I truly know them, not just their capabilities as a student, but them as a person. So uh, this trip is a privilege. I always want to start by saying that. And what a wonderful opportunity for them to just celebrate their years at Crofton Middle School. And I know, too, we also have some transfer students that came to us and I hope that they've already fit right in and felt welcome, and this trip will be meaningful to them as well. So, um, without further ado, I thought we'd get started. I do want to introduce, uh, this is Heather, and she is our travel agent with All About Travel. So we'll be kind of tag teaming and sharing, so uh, her portion will be talking about the itinerary, and any questions you may have about the, the payments and how that works with All About Travel, uh, as well as uh, I'm here to answer any questions you might have on your end about Crosby. Uh, we will not be talking about um, the departure information uh, that is saved for a later date, and I'll tell you when. Uh, that just students will be required to be at that meeting as we talk about all the ins and outs of the trip. What could prohibit them from going? Should something happen on the trip? Uh, so this meeting is more just the nuts and bolts about uh, what we're what we're going to do. So uh, welcome if you're a parent who's watching online, and there's a camera back there that's going for that, and we're going to upload that video for them. You can get this packet uh, on the parent page of the website. So if you do have uh, some type of smart device or if you like to write, our trip dates are April 27th through the 30th, 2017. And as stated, our mandatory departure meeting is listed about three times in that packet. It's Sunday, uh, the 23rd of April at 7 p.m. here at Crosby. Um, I've changed that up over the years just to make sure that we can guarantee enough student um, participation in that night and with spring sports sometimes getting that conflict we don't always get 100 percent i do believe it's very important for students to be there so we schedule that for sunday evening i know that may conflict with church plans i'm sorry uh, you know, for us as well but uh, i've set that aside for that so all right so the goal for this evening uh we're going to review student expectations and I actually spoke with students today about those uh, so they're aware of them we're going to go over our tentative itinerary uh, establish the payment plan and review the trip commitment form that we will need submitted at the time of the first payment. So student expectations, um, and I told them this today, but they cannot be failing a single subject course. Here at Crosby, we find that as meaning two U's and one course. So I'll be checking report cards every six weeks when they are printed off and asked to see those and go down the list and just be checking in. I'll leave that um, standard of, of excellence needs to be held for something that we consider a privilege. And uh, you as parents, I think, would agree. If you have concerns over that, we can talk. I've also seen it where it enhances a student to keep on their toes and really keep up with their academics, and you, you hold that over them as a uh, the reward. So uh, maintaining a satisfactory conduct grade in band class is also a requirement. So if a student gets into that needs improvement area, we'll be sure to set up some type of meeting with uh, you and the student. And then obviously no suspensions. Uh, we just, if this child gets suspended for a reason, whether we believe it's their fault or not, um, I just can't uh, really maybe feel comfortable taking that student on a trip out of state. So that is something Mr. Kelly stands by as well. So those are the three biggies uh, and they're there in the handbook you have as well. So um, I thought we'd flip to the itinerary portion now and talk about that. And you can take some questions later for me or that you might have for Heather as well. Hi, my name is Heather Hurst. I'm with All About Travel. And uh, we put together the trip itinerary. We also send a guide to accompany the trip, which usually each year is me with Crosby Middle School. Uh, we have done Gatlinburg before once in the past. So we're going to do something pretty similar if you had any, uh, if you knew anything about that from before. So. We'll jump right in and uh, start here with the first page is just some some basic details. We've got our hotel here, the coach operator, which is the one we used last year, uh, anchor transportation. Uh, they've done a good job last year. I expect them to do well again. Oh, shit. Okay. So fancy. I've never had one before. Okay. So we used Anchor Transportation last year. They did a great job. Probably going to use them again. Um, this on here has the travel planner information, which is just our company, and then my name and our office phone number. Uh, closer to time when we actually do our probably uh, second trip meeting, 
I'll go ahead and put my cell phone number on there as well for in case of emergencies. They'll be me. They'll also be Mr. Satters. And then on down here, you can see the trip inclusions. Uh, pretty much everything. All meals are be included. Um, technically, you shouldn't need a, your child shouldn't technically need anything else. You can provide souvenir money, extra spending money if you desire, uh, items of a personal nature. So the natural itinerary here, starting on Thursday, with a park to Crosby Middle School bound for Gatlinburg, drive time approximately five hours with a stop. Uh, usually we stop somewhere right in the middle for a restroom break. Usually it'll be like a gas station, they can pick up some snacks if they decide they'd like to buy some snacks. Usually we provide time for that. <clears throat> and then we get on into Gatlinburg. Um, that evening we've got a reservation uh, tentatively held for the Hard Rock Cafe where we can all have dinner and then some free time to explore downtown. The Edgewater Hotel um, is actually a very good location um, right in the heart of Gatlinburg. So usually um, we'll assign the chaperone groups and they can have some free time with their chaperone groups to explore some of that downtown area, um, provided they stay with the chaperone groups. Uh, Friday morning, the hotel provides breakfast. So we'll wake up and have breakfast. As long as weather conditions are good, we're going to actually do our first tour of the day, uh, which will be the Sugarlands Visitor Center for a nice hike, which I know everyone just loves to do the hike, so uh, we'll get them out there, get them walk in, and then, uh, then uh, after we get back from that, we'll do the uh, transfer over to the Ripley's Wonder Works. We're going to try to do the Wonder Works that's still in process of making that contract, but that's the plan. Uh, we're going to have lunch at a to-be-announced place and then transfer back to the hotels for their uh, prepare, uh, prepare for their performance, which of course is the main reason that everyone is going, so plenty of time for that. Uh, after the contest is over and they do their performance, we'll head over to the Dixie Stampede where we'll do the dinner and the show and lots of fun stuff. Of course, since the kids aren't here, I'll go ahead and tell you one of my favorite things is sitting up at the top and watching them because there's no forks provided, no utensils, and they just look at you like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> well, I'm my part. <laughs> Saturday we can wake up, uh, have breakfast again at the hotel, and then uh, we'll actually transfer into Dollywood. Well, they'll have free time in the park, they'll do their lunch, um, we'll also attend the award ceremony, and then there'll be a, a stipend for dinner, also passed out. Um, then we'll all gather back up, head back into Gatlinburg, where they can have some free time for any last minute shopping, and back to the hotel for that evening. Sunday we wake up and have the breakfast, go ahead and check out the hotel, load up the coaches with all the instruments and the baggage, and then uh, transfer over to the NASCAR speed park, where they're sure to have a lot of fun. I'll do some race car driving, and let's see here. So then we'll wrap up and head over to CC's Pizza, so they'll have lunch, and then we'll make our return for home. Uh, along the way on the home, we'll have another stop in for uh, bathroom breaks and dinner. Dinner will be included as well. So we'll have a dinner break, approximate time into Louisville, 7, 7.30. We'll know a little bit closer to time. That'll be the end of the tour. Any questions about the itinerary? We'll go over packing lists and all of that. So, I need to ask those questions now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, payment plan you can notice in page six uh, of your packet. Um, the first deposit, we're asking of $100 uh, per person. So, that would include once I determine chaperones, um, each student as well as an adult. Uh, is due on the 29th of this month. Uh, that trip commit form is the very back one, it's the green one. Uh, and it just reviews the expectations, everything on that, uh, in the handbook that we just covered. Uh, so the second deposit, as you see on page six, are those dates. I think I maybe didn't change 2016, 2017 uh, handout. I'm sorry about that. So let's assume that that's for next year, not, not this year. So, um, but really, I open this up for any questions you may have, uh, academic questions, uh, how the students are being held accountable, um, questions about the trip in general, preparation for it, medical questions, uh, anything like that. Open your turning in your mind. Yes. My daughter's in 
daughter has worked at one roommate. Are you going to kind of facilitate them? Yes, I do a couple drafts. In fact, last year's trip to St. Louis, I think we did three different versions of it to try and figure out how to accommodate. Because I know that's a big deal. The students are sharing that space, and uh, maybe they're not best friends with their roommates. But uh, they're in their rooms really minimally. I mean, we, our curfew's about 10, 10.30 sometimes, and they're worn out from the day. Uh, and they sleep and they wake up early. So, uh, But we will make sure every student's comfortable, yes. Mm -hmm. I just saw that, um, you know, like everything's included. Does that include, like, even the admissions? Day? Does that include the chaperones as well? Or yes, everything's included. So we've had students not bring any any money with them, and then we've had some that only want it. And you see it listed on there for souvenirs and such. So, and I wouldn't. Some parents say, "What's a recommended price?" To I think fifty dollars is plenty, plenty good. So. Yes. Uh, is it typical, like, for a chaperone that does go, is it, like, usually one chaperone and three kids in a room, like, a, a, in a quad room, and what's the maximum number of kids that's with each chaperone? Good question. So, uh, talked with Mr. Kelly about this, and uh, it is a JSPS rule where an adult cannot share the same room as a student. So, uh, those quads would be the only students. <laughs> And then the uh, adult chaperones would have either a single occupancy or if they request a double occupancy, and we can find that. Um, I know spouses obviously would share a double occupancy price, uh, and that's how we accommodate. So. Is, that a, is that a Crosby policy? Because I'm actually going to D.C. with my daughter's elementary school, and we have to stay in the room with two parents and two kids. Hmm. Maybe it's different at the elementary level. Is it elementary? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I talked with Mr. Kelly, he did say, you know, middle school, high school, that's kind of... Uh, I can touch base with Mr. Kelly about that rule. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, that is the one exception where if it's your child um, and they want to room with you, then absolutely. So, but it couldn't be in addition with another student. So. <coughs> You had your hand up. Take the answer. <laughs> kind of a double question. Uh, swing on with one of those. Um, will the chaperones be staying like right next door then if they're not in the same room? Typically, the agency does a good job of putting the chaperones on one side and the students on the other half, so it's not like wall to wall. But on um, the same floor. On the same floor. They really want to keep mm -hmm. that. They know that we are there to help the kids maintain order. We're the first that they call if there's a noise complaint. So we. We'll have access right down, usually right down, right down, hallway. Mr. Um, so, uh, just looking at page five, are all the students together in quads? That's the goal, and that reduces the price. So if we have one that's three, those three individuals will pay, will pay a little bit more. So that that's just sort of like the uh, odd number at the end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then we try, I mean, if it ends up where there has to be a room of three, we try and figure out how to make that work and even out the money. And sometimes we find where it's just one kid, so we get a pull out bed and there's a room of five. That's an option also. Yes? Can you tell us a little bit about the concert and what they're going to be playing sure. and how you're going to prepare that? Yeah. Um, so we, um, as you know, we prepare in the springtime for our district festival. And we are planning to use at least one, if not both, of those selections. Um, past two years, we've taken all Kentucky home on the road with us, just because it's special. So, but it's two selections we prepared. Uh, the judges in the past have all been outstanding, uh, primarily coming from a collegiate background, but also a lot of years in education. And they not only provide us comments, but a ranking. So it is uh, based on a rubric score, and the students do compete for a score, so there will be a placement. Mm -hmm. And I kind of coach the kids on what placement opportunities they're eligible for when we get closer to the trip. So, and it would be uh, Friday night, is that right? The trip? Friday Usually is. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Can you have your payment schedule where it's like $100 this month? On our, is that if you're the chaperone and you're going to, would it be 200 It would be. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then when we get towards that final payment one, the difference will be noted, and I try and send home separate letters for that. You'll notice we also skip the month of December just because it's around Christmas time to alleviate that concern for pain. So. Yes, ma'am. Can I scan the email? Did you say you were dropping the chaperones from 30 to 
15. I know that we won't be able to accommodate all 30, So, uh, but I've talked with Heather, and we're looking at an option to where a hotel down the road could potentially house more adults who would like to just go on the trip, maybe not even necessarily chaperone, and you could get a part of the package tour. Uh, and even drive down and go at your own pace rather than riding the bus. But I guess right now the number one priority is getting the student count, and then we're going to assign the, that number in rooms, and then and then next step is to figure out how many parents we need to help us on the trip. So, so would that be after the first deposit? Or? That is a good question. Uh, I plan to work today. I'm going to look at numbers and see where we're at, and then maybe make some phone calls for parents who couldn't attend tonight just to get a feel for where they're at with decision making, and then um, hopefully before the first deposit, yes, I have that determined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful questions. Yes? When the kids are exploring downtown, on the hike, and all of that, are the chaperones well mixed? The thing I love about this trip is, I mean, we really are doing everything together. I mean, the hike is together, where we're eating is together. Um, Ms. Mullins attended a couple of years ago with uh, their son Henry, and I mean, we were pretty much together. The one cool part about the park day is the students, it, it basically all the participants in music in the parks are there. So you see all the t-shirts and the students will get one provided and they wear it that day. So they have to be clustered in and that, at that time they are in groups of four or more and they're free to the park uh, and it's very well controlled and monitored and we have established check-in times and with those chaperones and we check in at lunch and then the awards ceremony at 5 p.m. And then uh, when we're ready to load up, obviously. Never had an issue with it at all. So. Never seen a bear? No. <laughs> 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 Maybe some so, um, Ms. Mullins? Just as a note, um, when we explored downtown, when we had those times, the yes. chaperones kind of divvied up and said, okay, who wants to do the sky lift? And, mm -hmm. you know, and it worked out fine. It did. It was pretty yeah. casual. Yes. Uh -huh. So downtown, they were yeah. traveling with their chaperones. Thank you, Ms. Mullins. Yes? What type of fundraising? Yes. How are you going to do okay. <laughs> yeah. To cut the price down, groups in the past are pancake fundraiser, and uh, that's listed. Um, I want to say it's December twelfth. It's one of those Saturdays. It's the second Saturday in December. We're hosting a pancake breakfast here, and the eighth graders are in charge of running it, meaning uh, helping cook, helping serve, helping clean, helping bus, entertaining. Here at Collier, you can do some jokes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but it's fun to watch, and we invite the entire Crosby community this year instead of having it at Applebee's. We're having it here at Crosby, and uh, we're going to advertise around Douglas Hills trying to get in the community to help support. So that one does bring in close to $2,000 for us to where we cut down cost per kid. So I think uh, one year we <coughs> cut about 50% that last payment for every student. So we do a lot of fundraising to help assist. And every fundraiser that 8th grade does, those profits go just for 8th grade trip. So, for example, the coupon book they're doing now, everything 8th grade pulls in, goes to the trip for them. December 10th. Is December 10th, thank you. Right. I couldn't remember all the time. Thank you. <laughs> Good questions. And maybe you have one that you'd like to ask after or email, and that's fine too. So. Any more questions? And you do see in there um, that what, what we're doing and working towards, um, if a student has to pull out and we look at that, um, you know, rationale of why. Uh, it is labeled consistently non-refundable, and that's just because when we lock into a certain date, we have to pay in advance for those tickets and purchasing. So if, if your child decides not to go, you know, everyone's taking a hit by doing that. So to give you, you know, your child's money back for that scenario just isn't, isn't fair to everyone else when we're trying to pay the cost of the trip. You know? So right. Anything I may be missing, Heather? Well, and I'll talk with your students some, and they seem pretty excited. So, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, who currently does have the sign-in iPad? All right, has anyone not received it yet? All right. <laughs> okay, that was my fault. I was trying to be all savvy, and then it took a little bit longer than we thought. So, anyway, if you didn't, if, if you can find, like, a scrap piece of paper, even if you have to tear a little slip off, and wouldn't mind writing your email address? And then just putting it up uh, on this bookshelf over here, that would be awesome. And I'll type it in myself. So, but thank you guys.